right, we're going to go ahead and get started. Welcome to today's webinar titled, as you can see, Navigating the Autodesk Fusion Products. My name is Tom Neville, and I'm the manufacturing team lead here at Synergist, and I'm very excited to be presenting with a few members from our application consultant team, Scott Stortz and Dave Taylor. I'll transition over to Dave and Scott to go into a little bit more detail about today's presentation in a moment, but I wanted to take an opportunity to step back and give you a very brief overview of who Synergist is. For those of you who don't know, I'm looking through the attendee list and there are a number of a number of existing customers and we appreciate uh, you guys joining, but there's also some new names too. So we are a, a 30 plus year Autodesk reseller, partner, consultant, service provider, and training, training location. We serve customers in the AEC space, government, education, and obviously, for today's audience, the manufacturing space. Uh, one of our primary focuses is helping make customers of all sizes more competitive, innovative, and successful through leveraging their existing investment in the Autodesk solution set. As we've seen various manufacturing industries change over the past 10, 20, 30 years, it's no longer just enough to have a CAD tool or just enough to have an ERP or CRM or DM, you name it. Products are mature, margins are thin, most of you in the audience today manufacture a very mature product that has gone through rounds and rounds and years and years of iteration. Manufacturers are already excellent at product innovation, and what we want to do is partner with companies on, exist, on extending that excellence through to process innovation. To that end, we want to make sure that we're providing value back to our customers by increasing awareness around some of the more underutilized or newer tools to the market that can be incredibly beneficial to, to you. Uh, one of those areas is the Fusion platform and the many products that fit under that umbrella. And that's really what we're going to be talking about here today. So um, with all that said, I'll, I'll kick it over to Dave and, and we'll go from there. Thanks, Tom. All right. So let's get started here. So, but before we start, let's um, talk about what we're going to be uh, going over today. So we're going to be covering the Autodesk Fusion products at a, at a high level. So uh, everybody gets an understanding of, of the different products in the platform. Um, and also get a, a better understanding on the differences between those those names that you might hear, uh, whether it's Fusion 360, Fusion 360 Manage, uh, Fusion Team. Um, what are those differences? And and also, do those products connect to other platforms as well? Um, so whether they connect to uh, your vault, whether can they connect to each other uh, as well? Uh, we're going to go over that. And everyone is muted. And as Tom had said, uh, please ask your questions as we go, and we'll uh, maybe we'll have some time at the end. We can take some live questions as well. So our, for the agenda, we're going to go over the Fusion 360 Manage product. Uh, you might also call it the, the, might also hear it called Vault PLM, and we'll be going over some details about that, um, with some lifecycle management and. Um, uh, bill of materials and, and, and supplier managements. But then we're going to also go to the Fusion Team Hub. Uh, it's kind of like a team and project site uh, online that you can store files in for data storage. Uh, you can have project members in. Uh, you can view your files. You also have version control there. And then we're going to also talk about the Fusion 360, which is CAD, CAD modeling and, and uh, more features in there. So there's additional environments in Fusion 360 as well, such as generative design, rendering, simulation, manufacturing, which is your CAD CAM, um, and also we'll talk about cloud credits. So uh, our first product that we're going to talk about is the Fusion 360 Manage. And with that, Scott, our expert on the Fusion 360 Manage, is going to be talking about that. So Scott, you want to go ahead and, and just talk about some of the bullet points, and then we'll go ahead and, and go to the next slide, and we'll do our demo. Yeah, so Fusion 360 Manage is Autodesk PLM tool. LM stands for Product Lifecycle Management, and the, the goal of Product Lifecycle Management is to manage your business processes. Now, all business processes entail data, um, and there are some capabilities of managing the data directly within Fusion 360 Manage, uh, but its primary goal is to manage the process. I'm going to get into some more details about what does that mean and how does that look. Um, but again, one of the primary purposes of this discussion is, as you saw in the last slide, there's three different Fusion products. Um, and Fusion 360 Manage just recently underwent a name change. It used to be called Fusion Lifecycle. Uh, so to make this even more confusing, it 
Fusion 360 managed was Fusion Lifecycle, and it can also be referred to as Vault PLM when we're talking about connecting it directly to Vault. Um, you can see the bullet points here. I'm going to go into more detail on this, but um, the main, the primary business processes that Fusion 360 Manage works with is uh, new product introduction, bill of material management, change management, supplier management, and quality. It is a subscription-based licensing uh, model for this product. And we'll go into some more details when we get into the demonstration here on those topics. Sure. And uh, next, what we're going to do is we're actually going to show a, a demo of the product. Um, so with that, I'm going to stop the slide here and I'm going to hand over to Scott. And he's going to show a demonstration of the actual product. Okay, so what we are looking at here is a Fusion 360 tenant. Um, as is the case with all Autodesk Fusion branded products is it's a cloud-based software. Um, I think that's obviously the, the premise behind the Fusion name and the common common aspect of the Fusion name and the three products we're talking about is all three are cloud-based products. In the case of Fusion 360 Manage, uh, that means that there is absolutely nothing that needs to be installed on the user's end. Uh, you only need a web browser and an internet connection and, and a user ID and uh, you know credentials, login credentials and licensing. But in terms of the software itself, you just need uh, Microsoft Edge, Chrome, Firefox, and an internet connection uh, and you can get into Fusion Manage. And as we discussed before, there are main core functional areas of the software. I'm going to show you some examples of these things. But what the goal here is, is to manage these business processes in the areas of new product introduction. And what that means is, you know, your MPI process, your stage gate process is, you know, a term that a lot of companies use. Uh, you know, how do you get new products released to the market? And how do you manage the process of getting those products released to the market? Next area would be product development. The most common components of product development would be your part numbers and your bills and materials. Next area, change management. The common things, common components of change management would change requests and change orders. Uh, oftentimes there's tasks associated to those processes, some of those examples. Next big Functional areas, quality management. Quality management would be things like return merchandise authorization, CAPAs, non-conformances, things of that nature. And then supply chain management. Uh, suppliers, we've done some really nice things with Fusion 360 Manage with customers in terms of supply chain management, supplier management. Uh, there's a, often companies have a, a pretty in-depth formal process of determining if a supplier is approved to supply materials to your organization. And then there's a process around that. So how do you manage that process today? I'm gonna to go into some more details here. Um, looking at, this is the home screen that we're looking at here. And when it comes to managing a process, a big part of managing that process is understanding where does that process stand? Um, what is the status of a certain process or a, 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 an aspect of a certain process? And you can see at the very top here, there's reporting capabilities, graphic-based reporting capabilities. First one here as an example, is just audits by workflow state. Can hover over this and understand you know i have these many audits that are in these different states in my organization similar to here on the right suppliers by type i'm looking for a certain supplier that maybe supplies electrical components i see that we have 27 different uh electronic component suppliers in our organization currently um you know there's other things here task by priority and things of that nature so you can have these reports there is built-in reporting functionality to help you manage the process these reports can be tailored. You can create your own reports. You can share those reports. You can keep reports to yourself. Depending on your role in the organization, these reports that would be shown here are what apply to you and how you, with the data and information that you want to see. Next section down the home page is your outstanding work list. And this is important. This is everything that applies to you in the system is going to be listed here. So everything I need to act on as an individual is going to be shown here. Now, there's a lot of things here. You can just a lot of different. Um, Different objects listed here, you know, problem reports, non-performances, change orders, suppliers. You know, I have this is a demonstration tent, so obviously there's a lot of processes in here. And a lot of customers do build out a lot of processes, but a lot of customers also start smaller and, and only have one or two processes. Either way, whatever process I have to act on is going to be shown here in this list. And if that has a due date associated to it, it will have a, you know, show that due date and a color-coded flag relative to that due date. 
Uh, you can see this item up here is late. If an object has been delegated to me, it will have that delegation information here also. This, the software has the ability to delegate you know, a process to somebody when you're out on vacation or whatever the case may be. Down here at the bottom, you can see there's bookmarks and some recently viewed items also. So I can bookmark things I go into on a regular basis, a project I may be working on regularly. And then down here at the bottom, this just goes, lists whatever I've clicked on recently in the software. And so I'm going to highlight something here too before I get into these processes. Um, you know, our goal here is just kind of give you an overview and a general understanding of what the software can do. Usually when we demonstrate Fusion 360 Manage, the customers, it's a, at least an, an hour and a half type demonstration initially. So I'm just going to go through this on a high level, superficial uh, review to just give you an idea of what the capabilities and what the focus of the software is so that we can get comparison to what the focus of the other two Fusion, Autodesk Fusion based softwares are. Uh, so in terms of managing processes, first area I'm going to look at here is new product introduction. So if I look, I can have all of my new product introduction processes in, in place here. So you know, again, the goal here is we we release new products to the market. Where do those products stand? Where where do those does that process stand for these different products I have? And we're going to quickly look down and see some are in the first gate. This one's been completed. This one hasn't been started. I can see a lot of you know different information I can list here in terms of all the projects I have in the queue in my organization. I just want to see which ones are currently under gate review. You know, now that list gets filtered down and I can very quickly identify that information because I'm managing the process of a of this gate review in Fusion uh, Manage. So I click on that, now I can go into that. So what does what does managing an MPI process look like? Uh, you know, you have a lot of fields, text of information here. You know, what what uh, product line does it apply to? Some details around what the product is. Uh, some key KPIs here and how I stand relative to the gates. And all these fields and all the, the pieces of information data I'm looking at can and are tailored to your organization. It's very simple to change this interface and change the fields and the layout that we're looking at here. Uh, this is for demonstration purposes. It is It does come out of the box. You can use these processes. They're fully functional out of the box, but every customer changes you know, the fields and information that they're applies to them and what they want to review. So just to give you an idea of what could be managed and what could be tracked here, uh, you know, what's the targeted gate or what's the targeted timeline for these different gate reviews, some of the priority levels for that. A uh, big item too when it comes to a, a releasing a new product is the financial impact of that, right? How much does it cost? What's the, the budget for the project itself? Um, that kind of information. What's the total cost of doing this project? You can track some of that information here in Fusion Manage. And if I look at the process itself, just to give you an idea of what this process could look like, you know, you can have these different stage gates, you know, you, you enter these different uh, phases of the project specification, development, validation phases, and so on, and ultimately it goes into production. And then you can have gate reviews. You can see here, you can build out this, and these, again, this workflow map that we're looking at here is very, customizable and, and tailorable to your needs. Uh, it's very easy to change this and make this comply to what your particular new project introduction process might be. Um, you can associate or you can store files directly within Fusion Manage. It is not a data management tool like Vault is, but it does have the ability to store files directly in that in the system. You, uh, it is not a CAD file, and we'll get into this when we get to the uh, items and bills and materials part. It's not meant to be for CAD files, but for things like this, like I'm doing a new project introduction process, uh, I have specifications that apply to this project. So what are those specifications? Instead of storing that information on a, a network drive or emailing it out to the people involved in the project, I can store that file directly in Fusion Manage and now it's associated. Now, nobody has any question of what are the specifications I'm designing to for this project. And when that changes, you know, it, it does version that so you can have the different versions of that in here. Again, it's, it's not a full-blown data management tool like what a desk vault is, but it does have lightweight functionality in terms of it does version things. And I can attach these files in here and see different, you know, if I want to have the marketing brochure for this product in here, I can have those documents directly managed and maintained within, you know, within the Fusion Manage system. 
And you can see this is bringing up the built-in viewer. One of the things that's going to be common throughout this presentation, or, or certainly when we get to the Fusion Team part, is the, the viewer that's used here is the same across the Fusion platform. Uh, it's built into the system. There's nothing that needs to be downloaded or installed on your computer to do to view um, some of these files. And you can see these, in this case, we're looking at PDF files. Later, we'll show some CAD-based files and, and things of that nature. It views a tremendous variety of different files, and it's all included and built into the, the software itself in the cloud. I'm going to go to the next again. We're just doing a quick overview here. So the next area would be uh, your item and bill material information. So if I look at the item and bill material information, you know, obviously you're going to have a lot of items and bills and materials here. Your part numbers, you can see here I have a list of them. I see what release they're at, um, you know, what life cycle they're in, whether they're meeting compliance. And all of these fields, again, this is all tailorable to what applies to your business. Maybe you have compliance needs, maybe your compliance needs are different than the compliance needs shown here. Maybe you don't have compliance needs in your organization, we can just get rid of that information. Um, you know, but you can have all of this information here and you can filter this list very quickly. This top items, this is, you know, top level assemblies. You know, what are the top level assemblies I have in my system? And if I can filter this down, now we're down to just three of these items. If I look at this here, what does a item bill material look like? Uh, similar to the last screen we were looking at, you know, it has some basic fields of information, uh, some you know, compliance information if that applies, dimensional information, a variety of different things. Again, that would be whatever you'd want to put in here. Uh, in terms of bill material itself, now we can look at the bill material. It does have the ability to do multiple level bill material breakdown here. Uh, so I can look down all levels of this bill material. I can see some of these files have attachments. I can go directly into those attachments if I want to. Uh, and this view that we're looking at right now is just a basic bill material view. It's, you know, the part number, it's revision, it's life cycle state, uh, the quantity that applies to that particular line item. But maybe I want to see it in a different uh, way. Different information is important to me. I want to look at the technical details so I can filter this list or create a different view for these bills of materials and look at that same bill of material, but in a different way. Now you can see, now I'm looking at dimensional information and weight information. Um, I can also do this you know, with compliance. If compliance is important to me, if I work in a different part of the organization, I'm not in engineering, but I work you know, with procurement and things in that nature, I need to see the compliance information that applies to this. And also do comparisons. I'm not going to run that right now, but I can compare this bill material, one bill material to the next bill material, whether it's Rev A versus Rev B, or even two completely different bills of materials I can compare using Fusion Manage. You see here at the top, I have you know, what the current revision is, what date this was approved and went into production state. So managing your bill of materials is one of the core pieces of functionality in the software. And that can be connected and that can be driven directly from Vault in the case of Vault PLM, which is Fusion Managed connected directly to Vault. Uh, this bill of material and these part numbers can be driven directly from the, the data that's stored in Vault. The CAD files still remain in Vault and still remain controlled by Vault. But the part number and bill material information can be pushed over into Fusion Manage to allow those part numbers and, and that bill material information to be used in your business processes, to manage your business processes. One of those processes, you know, change management. So you know, we have change requests is a very common thing that, you know, organizations, I know my last organization, we really struggled with change requests, uh, particularly because change requests oftentimes are emails, phone calls, uh, that kind of thing. Um, I think every organization probably has a change order or, or ECO process in place, but how do you manage your requests? And, and is that process broken up? You have a separate request process. If you don't, you can add that kind of thing here in Fusion Managing. You can kind of see here, okay, so if I look at this one, this change request has gone down through and it's now in the, in the CO state. So what does that mean? If I go into this particular uh, change request and look at the, the, uh, the workflow, for this change request. And I see, you know, we've gone through some review and analysis, maybe some tasks were done, but I'm down here at this point in the process. And this says a change order is in, in progress. So in this case, the change order obviously was reviewed and approved. I'm sorry, the change request was reviewed and approved. And now that's generated a change order. So I can connect those two processes, and, but keep them separate in a way so that they can be managed as two separate phases. Um, so if I look at these related processes here, now I see my change work. If 
I go into here, now I go into what the change order that was generated from that change request. If I look at this approval workflow, this is gonna be a completely different workflow because the change request or the change order process has a different set of steps, different criteria, different personnel involved. And that's what Fusion Manage is bringing to the table here. It, it gives you the ability to manage these processes, get the right information to the right people at the right time, go through the appropriate workflow. It has the ability to, to configure these workflows in any way you want. Every workflow we've seen so far is can be completely changed to what works for you and your organization. Um, and it keep, gives you the ability to understand where all those things are at, who's responsible for it, you know, what steps and actions need to be taken next. Another example for that, we talked about uh, quality. So if I look at the quality process, you know, in this case, we're looking at return merchandise authorization. I can look at this RMA. Uh, again, there's a lot of pieces of information in here where we have different fields and, and information. You see this is related to a corrective action also. I can connect and I can build all these processes with connections to each other. You know, oftentimes a quality processes are, are a little bit disconnected from the engineering change process. Fusion Manage allows you to, to put these processes in place and when appropriate and when you're ready to connect them together so that a return merchandise process maybe drives a corrective action process and then maybe that corrective action process can also drive a change request process um, you know when you get to that point that would be a common way of doing things and you can build all those connections together if you choose to do so look at the you know the approval workflow in this uh, rma this it's a more simple straightforward type workflow here next area of core functionality would be suppliers supplier management if I look down here, I can see all the suppliers that are in my system. Some are active, some are still under review. Um, some have an audit in process. You can see when their next evaluation is up to date or when their next evaluation is due. Future Manage allows you to build those kinds of things into the system too. You know, a process that has, you know, a document expires say every three years, or in this case, a, a supplier needs to be evaluated every two years, let's say. The system can track that and in advance of that expiration timeline or that review timeline can proactively inform you, send you emails that you know that that is coming up and needs to be completed. And then you can initiate the, you know, the review for that particular supplier at that point in time. If I look at this one, I can just look at ones that have an audit in process. So if you have an audit you conduct, obviously the results of that audit can affect the status of a supplier. You know, in this case, this supplier has an audit in active audit um, you know, i can have obviously you can see some fields of information down here relative to that i can see you know when the last audits were done what the results of these audits were non-conformance here um, you know they obviously had a non-conformance against them uh, for this part number so you know, I can connect all these things together you can see how these things are starting to build where i have my item and bill material connected to the non-conformance the non-conformance is then connected to the audit for the supplier. You can have these files attached here. In this case, you know, I have some office files, Excel files, and uh, their certification. So you know, this is the kind of thing we've done a lot with building out customers for supplier management. You know, in terms of a supplier getting approved to supply materials, oftentimes they need to have an ISO certification, a, a terms and conditions signed off on, maybe their insurance certification, those types of things. Well, where are all those documents stored today and how do you know that they're approved and when do they expire? Fusion Manage provides a lot of capabilities uh, to help you bring that information together, control it and manage it, you know, so that you don't get to the point where these, your suppliers are becoming, their documents are expired and you don't know. That kind of thing. thing I forgot to show you here is if I look at this one, um, the built-in viewer relative to CAD models. And so what, what would be a common use case here is if this was connected to vault directly we can push over the visualization files from vault to this item or bill material information and the advantage here is and vault is an engineering based application fusion manage is intended to be an, an enterprise-wide organization-wide process um, you know so but being an organization-wide process it's obviously valuable to see be able to see some of these pieces of information um, you know, if you don't have access to Vault, well, now I can at least go in here. I can look at the, the CAD models. If I need to do that, I can see the bill material structure. I can highlight on some of these things and zoom in on it. So it, it gives me the visualization capabilities uh, to do that directly within Fusion Manage. 
And you're going to see that same embedded viewer I just showed you. You're going to see that when we get to the fusion, uh, some of the other fusion stuff that Dave's going to talk about. I think that really kind of covers it on a superficial level or a high level, covers what Fusion Manage is here for. Again, just to reiterate, it's, it's here to help manage all of your business processes. So who's responsible for getting something done? Where does a process stand? Where do your new product introductions stand? What's been complete? What's still outstanding? Who has actions to take? What were the results of those actions? What were maybe some of the, the documents that went into those actions? You know, that, the results, you know, what, what are some of the attachments that created the change order or created the NPI process, um, that type of information. So all of that, and the goal here is to manage that and provide you a lot of flexibility in what information you and how you format this is very flexible in Fusion Manage, what the workflow process looks like and what the fields and information that you're tracking look like. And all be very easily tailored to your particular business needs to help you manage that process in the way that you want. That I'm going to turn it back over to Dave to go over the next Fusion product. Okay, so uh, so we're going to go over Fusion Team Hub right now, and it look, it look a little similar to what Scott has been talking about, but um, um, it is a standalone product. Um, it can be used on its own, or and or it can be integrated with the 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 product called Fusion 360, which is your your CAD modeling, or there's also a product called Vault Sync that you can. Um, integrate this Fusion Team Hub with Vault as well. Um, and it's a team and project site that has data storage on it. So you're going to store your CAD files in there. You can store you can store inventor files. You can store AutoCAD files, um, um, generic files such as SATs, STLs, OBJs, um, SOLIDWORKS files you can put on there, uh, Pro-E, CATIA files as well. Um, you can have project members on, on on the Fusion Team Hub in each different uh, project, and you can act, you can give them access to the different projects as well. It will allow you to view files on the online on the web, and it will also give you version control. So every time you create a new version, uh, either through F Fusion 360 or you upload a new file with the same name, it will create a new version of that file uh, within the Fusion Team Hub. And the licensing is is included with Fusion 360 subscription. Uh, but there are additional Fusion 360 team participant licenses. If, if somebody doesn't have Fusion 360, you can, you can um, get those licenses as well to add them to the team hub. And uh, if, if it's just a viewer access that, that just needs basic access, um, you can share the, the, that, the data and the files to those uh, people who need the viewer access as well. So let's go, go ahead and do a little bit of demo on the Fusion team hub. So let's, let's escape out of that. So here is the Fusion Team Hub, and um, it is accessed on the web. And when you first log into your hub, you'll see that your different projects on the left-hand side. Over here on the left-hand side uh, are the different projects. If you click on a, on a specific project, you can view the files in the project. Um, you can also create new projects uh, by uh, creating your project in the right top right-hand side button here. And with that, it, it kind of uh, it it, it resembles a way almost like folders in, in Explorer or folders in Vault or um, projects that you're working on uh, for your for your company. So let's go ahead and click on one of these projects. For example, the Fusion 360 workshop. And you can see here it has loaded up all the information within that project. So you can see my, my files that are within the project. You can see the, the project members. So uh, if I click on the project members, you can invite other users within your, your organization or people who uh, you want to invite to this. And like I said before, licensing is, um, you know, you'll have to have a license to be able to add or edit files, but uh, just the view, you can give them in, invite access to view the files there. And then you also have a wiki pages where you can add uh, your information for notes for this particular project. Um, almost like specification pages or other information for that project as well. So let's go back to content. Um, over here on the right-hand side, there's a little tab. You can see the project details, um, and you can see that there's different project types. Um, I can I can open project. Um, I can close a project. I can make it secret only, so uh, only invited members can see the project. So you can have different project type settings as well here. And we also see an activity page that has all the different activity of the different files that have been added within the project. 
So here in my, my, my content view, I see the different uh, files, but I can also upload files by clicking the upload button. I can also hit the, the, the drop down to create new folders. I can um, upload an assembly from Inventor Assembly. I can also get it from Dropbox if I want to. I can add new folders here. I can also view it in different different ways. So I can view it in, uh, in an icon view or a list view. If I double click on one of the, or if I click on one of the files, it will go into my overview of that file and it will show us the uses, um, if it's been used in any, any assemblies up above it and if it has any drawings attached to it as well. I can also hit the view button and view that file directly on the web um, and, and measure it, mark it up um, directly here on the web as well. I can also hit the open in desktop button and open it up in the Fusion 360 desktop. I can also add comments, I can share it out, I can download the file, and there's other options here for copying, moving um, the files in between projects. Um, uh, this viewer is, is, is really uh, uh, the same as what you'll see in the Fusion 360 Manage and other platforms on um, the web that Autodesk has created, so the viewer does re react the same, uh, almost the same way all throughout there. Um, you can also see here in my my files. Also see here in my files. Let's go back to my work my workshop project. You can see that I have versioning on those files. So right now that uh, that machine screw is at version one, but you can see here my enclosure assemblies at version seven. So I've so I have created seven different versions of that file, either uploaded them or created them in my Fusion 360 CAD platform. I can drop that down. And there's my other options there too, as you saw um, on the drop down, what I actually is in the file. I can also download or export and download the file um, there. To upload the files, I can take files directly from my computer. For example, I can take uh, a SAT file and I can just drag and drop directly into my Fusion 360 workshop project. You can see how here has created that that file there with my version one, and um, even though that's an SAT file, it still is accessible to be used in my Fusion Team Hub. And as it's uh, it's it's working here is actually creating the visualizations and able to be used. Okay. And the reason I wanted to go over the Fusion Team Hub first is because this can be available as a standalone product, but it can also be used in um, Fusion 360, uh, the CAD app application as well. Uh, it connects to that. So uh, with that, let's go ahead and go back to our presentation and open this up. And of course, I got to switch that over again. There we go. So with Fusion 360, the CAD platform, what uh, it is is CAD modeling, and it has a lot more within it. It's got the data storage uh, with the with the Fusion Hub. It's got the design environment. It's got generative design environment. It's got a rendering simulation. It's got your your CAM environment, which is the manufacturing. Um, and there's also a thing called cloud credits available for Fusion 360. So some of these some of these environments, such as generative design, will have uh, you'll you'll need cloud credits accessible. Um, for you to purchase to create a gender design uh, outcome. And what because only because that gender design, when you do the outcomes of gender design, it is using the cloud and their cloud servers to create the outcomes. So anything that uses the cloud within Fusion 360 will need those cloud credits. Now, there are cloud credits that can be used for rendering or simulation but you can also use a local solver for those too. So if you have a pretty good computer and you want to use a local solver for those, you can you can use those without using any cloud credits. But there is an option for those to be switched over and use the cloud credits and use their Autodesk servers to, to get your simulation times down to uh, use those the, the server, server farm to get those down. And I believe uh, with simulations, it, it, it is around less than 20 minutes to get a simulation or rendering out um, with, using the cloud credit in the server form, but it could be, you know, hours um, if you're using uh, your local solvers. Um, this is also a subscription-based prod uh, product on its own. 
or it's also included with the product design and manufacturing collection. So any anytime you buy the Fusion um, or buy the product design and manufacturing collection, you're going to get Fusion 360 built in. All right. So let's go ahead and with our demo of Fusion 360, and let's open that up. You can see as you start Fusion 360, you'll see the, the Fusion team that you are logged into on the left-hand side. So you can see that the list here looked very, fam very familiar and very similar to what I had in my Fusion Team Hub, because it is. I am looking directly into my Fusion Team Hub. So if I were to go to the Fusion 360 workshop folder, you can see all the files that I had in that Fusion Team Hub. And there's my file I had just drug into that Hub workspace. Okay. Okay, refresh. If I double click on a file here, it will open up the file directly in my Fusion 360 CAD application and I can edit and modify any of the files. Once I edit and modify any of the files, it will create a new, and I hit save, it will create a new version for me and it will reflect back to that Fusion Team Hub. I can also use my different uh, files that I've, I've created or I've uploaded in that Fusion Team Hub here, and I can drag and drop directly in my Fusion CAD. Uh, for example, one of these screws that I pulled from your master car, drag and drop it over, and you can see that I have, I can use that now in my Fusion 360. There are different options now um, within Fusion 360 CAD. So let me delete that one out of there. Um, Fusion 360, so I'm in my design environment. So this is your CAD modeling environment. And within other environments I've talked about, so gender design environment, uh, we've got that. So you just click on the gender design environment and it pulls open that environment for you to be able to add your different criteria for creating your general design outcome. And if you were to hit your generate button, it will tell you um, cloud credits and, and everything that you'll need to use to generate that. There's also the rendering environment within Fusion 360 CAD that you can use the render um, and you can see how the, the pieces have come in. Let's go ahead and delete the uh, show hide that one. And you can see now it has rendered it as more, um, more lifelike more realistic. Um, you can also render it here. And this is where I was talking about also using the cloud renderer and the local renderer. So the cloud renderer, you can see it will take less than 20 minutes to render that out, but local renderer doesn't give you a time because depending on what type of computer you're using, you can render that out. We also have the um, animation environment in Fusion 360 where we can uh, use anima make animations, where we can um, uh, tweak things to move things in and out and create an, an, animations. So let's go ahead and do that one. Let's go ahead and do this one quick. Move this over here. And I can take, and I can create an animation to push those in and out there. Also in Fusion 360, we've got the simulation environment. And I can create a simulation on that uh, for static stress, for, for cooling, for thermal, thermal stresses there, static stresses, um, nonlinear um, simulation for events. Uh, we also have shape optimization directly in Fusion 360. And you can create studies for those. Um, then we also have the manufacturing environment. And the manufacturing environment is your CAD CAM, so um, built within Fusion 360. So I have a, I have a, um, example here for that CAD CAM and let's go to manufacturing and you can see here I've created all the uh, the um, the paths for my tooling uh, directly within Fusion 360 for this to be created and I can simulate this as well uh, within Fusion 360 to see how my tool paths are going to be milled out. All right. Also in Fusion 360 CAD, we've got our drawing environment, so you can create drawings and you can create drawings from your design that you have uh, created from this design environment or from your animation environment as well, you can create uh, drawings from those. And here within the Fusion 360, um, as I create new new versions as well, it, it, it fully goes back and it creates those new, um, uh, new versions within the Fusion Hub. So you can 
you can um, go and and go and uh, go through there and you can see the different versions that you have. And you can also, within your different versions within Fusion 360, go back to those different versions and open those directly. So if I have if I have this closure assembly and I'm at version seven, but I might want to open up uh, an earlier version in that, um, say version four, and I hit open, it will open up that enclosure assembly at, at version four instead. And I can save this and, and use it as um, a different file if I want to. So Fusion 360 is very powerful. There are different options for modeling. Um, they're very similar to Inventor, what they uh, have built in. Um, there's some extra features within Fusion 360 as well, for, such as your, your direct editing, your press pull functions um, to be able to, to modify and, and edit your your uh, radiuses and your sides uh, directly on the fly. Um, but it's very powerful. It's all on the web to be able to um, collaborate. And with Fusion 360, if I were to save all these files, um, I can just close my Fusion 360 application and I could log into someone else's computer under my, my username and have all my files available to me. So you're not saving it out anywhere. Um, it's all contained within it, within the Fusion Team Hub, and also within your Fusion 360 product. And if I look here at also my, my panels over here, I can see my data panel for my, my, um, my project and also the people that it's shared with, such, such as when I showed the Fusion Team Hub, you can saw, see the project, project members. Um, this is the people that you'll see here in my Fusion. So if we're talking about Fusion Team Hub, we're talking about data management, data storage. We're talking about Fusion 360. We're just talking, and it's just Fusion 360. It is talking about just the CAD application on there. All right. Okay, so let me go back to, uh, go back to the swap. All right. So uh, those are the demos of the different products. Um, if you need help. One, the, well, one other thing that I just want to yeah. chime in with there, sure. Dave, uh, if you just go back to Fusion 360. So with Fusion 360, very recently added to the Fusion 360 portfolio is a Fusion 360 Manage extension. So what that is, is that brings some of the functionality that I showed you in Fusion 360 Manage into Fusion 360 application. So what that functionality brings in is change management, um, automatic part numbering management, and some release process management. So they're the process management capabilities of Fusion 360 Manage. Some of those are now available in Fusion 360 CAD as an extension. Uh, we don't have anything to show you with that today. There is some information online if you're curious. And if you are curious, certainly reach out to us and we can get you more information. It's very new. Uh, which is why we don't have we didn't have anything to demonstrate specifically with that for today uh, but autodesk is working to bring fusion 360 design software in and bring fusion 360 manage and, and bring those two products together so really all three fusion products then kind of come together in, in one or, or not in one they all are fully connected together then that's what you know we're working towards at this point in time but they can also, as Dave highlighted a couple of times in his presentation, I'm not sure if I mentioned it as much, but all three can also be completely independent of each other and, and provide value as completely independent products too. I just want to touch on that Fusion 360 Manage extension that has just recently become available within Fusion 360 CAD. Yeah, thanks for bringing that up, Scott. Good, all right. So let's go. Okay, so if you, um, of course, if you need any help or you need any other information about how to how to um, uh, get the different products, you can get us online, um, serious.com CAD, or you can use our help desk, or of course, reach out to Tom or any of the other sales managers um, as well in, in Synergist. Um, and with that, I don't know if there's anything else, Tom, that you wanted to go over um, at the end here. No, you, you kind of covered it there at the end. And, you know, if there are any follow-ups, our contact information is there. You can feel free to reach out. 